Hey guys, this is Kyme Interviews. We are here with Jared from YouTube. Hello my friends! How are you guys feeling out there? Give it up for all the other bands that played. We're a band called Sunrise Skater Kids from Baltimore. I love looking at all your beautiful faces. I'm so stoked. That was sick. That was so tight. Jared, please pronounce your last name because no one knows how to pronounce it. It is Alonji. Usually people think it's along because of Tom DeLong yeah. it's spelled pretty much the same way so it's reasonable. So uh, just to get started for people to understand a little bit more about you tell them what you do and kind of describe the early stages of how you got started on YouTube and kind of how you infused comedy into this specific Warp Tour scene. That's a massive question. Well I made a YouTube channel when I was I was in high school, it was like 2009, and I uploaded guitar covers, which you can't see anymore, I've taken them down. Through high school, I would do like sketch videos with friends. First it was just for like um, school projects and stuff, um, and then I enjoyed doing that, so into college I just did a few like over the break just for fun, and then I did every metalcore vocalist uh, during the summer two years ago. I guess that went like viral or semi-viral, whatever you want to call it. So I made the sequel to that, Every Pop Punk Vocalist, which if you're watching this, you've probably seen that to some capacity. Then I made a sequel to that, then did the Misheard Lyrics thing and just kind of kept going. And it, there was never a point where I was like, I want to be a YouTuber now. <laughs> I, I think I, anyone wants to say that. Yeah. I went to school for biology to do like medical stuff in the future, so it was just a hobby for a while. And I, I was kind of a, a, a douche about it, just kind of like I don't I don't want to do this. Why do why do people watch my videos? But now I've I guess accepted it and I enjoy it a bit more now. So yeah, I've, I've been doing I guess the real like YouTube game for like two years, um, and I did the album starting last year. It took a long time to do. And since I started that, I've been like full time doing YouTube stuff. Um, I make just enough ad revenue to uh, uh, to live off of it and not have to work and do it. So it is like my full time thing right now. And I'm on Warped now, so that's a good two months. Yeah. The YouTube Warped thing is relatively new. This is the second year they've yes. done it. So, I mean, how is that being out like not outsourced, but even directly called by Fearless to do this. I mean, that's even more of a privilege. So um, talk a little bit about how that came up and um, how you started your partnership with Fearless. Well, they approached me when they were in the early stages of putting out Punk Goes Pop 6. So um, I, I don't remember what led them to do it, but they wanted me to just do like the announcement video um, for the, the announcement for like the track listing. Uh, so I did that. Um, and We Came As Romans was in that video, that was fun. And then I did like a follow-up to that after it was released with Tyler Carter. And I guess that just put me in good terms with them. And then in the winter, uh, they, they kind of teased the idea like, would you be interested in doing Warped Tour or something? Um, which at first I didn't know what I would be doing because I, I don't like... I make music, but I don't actually have the capacity to like actually perform those songs. So they asked me to be like their pit reporter. Thing, and I really don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. The vlogs I put up so far are really not that substantial. And they're going to be like that. They're not going to change for the rest of the summer. Let's talk about your background with like the Warp Tour scene. I mean, did you go to Warp Tour when you were a kid? Or how recent has it been? And like, what kind of bands do you really like in the scene right now that you like yeah. fully back? I've been going to Warp Tour for like the last five years. Like I went last year as a concert goer, so it's a bit surreal being on it. I feel like, like I'm breaking the rules when I like go backstage and stuff. Like I'm going out of confinement, but one of these now, so we're good. Put your picture on it, right? You got a picture on it. Yeah, uh, it's an older one. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if it'll autofocus. There was a cut there because. I showed my laminate to the camera, and we're not supposed to show our laminates to the camera because people take it and then make fake laminates and then cause problems, terrorism. And that's going to get cut out, hopefully. What What is like one thing, if you were to write like a biography for your YouTube career or your comedy career, whatever you'd like to call it, what is one thing that you would say is like the um, biggest accomplishment that you've had thus far? I mean, do you think the album is, because I think the album's substantial. I'd say the album, um, it's the, 
It's the only thing I've done so far that I'm like truly proud of. Like I'm proud of most of what I do, but it's not like I mean they're just YouTube videos. They're just stuff you did in like a day or two. But uh the album took months and usually when I put up some videos or a new series, there's something immediately I find that's like, oh it could have been better, could have done this. But the album I I guess I had a lot of attention to detail and really put a lot into that and I'm very happy with how it came out um, and I definitely want to do stuff like that again so I would say definitely that for now. Yeah so how was that also working with the album with uh, artists like Maddie Montgomery is on it and a few others so I mean what was that like for you and um, why did you specifically choose those artists out of everyone you know? Well there there were a lot of guest vocalists we tried out, I mean, we even announced a few that actually did, ended up not going through. It's much more complicated than you would think. The band has to want to do it, but it also has to go through like their label and their management and stuff. And that's the hardest part, and that's kind of why a lot of them got shot down. But um, I befriended Cody uh, from Set It Off when we did a video together. That video's on my YouTube channel, and then uh, towards the end where I started meeting like, okay, I need to get some guest vocalists. I texted him and he was down for it, so we just recorded it. Um, and I, I've never met Maddie Montgomery in person, but uh, uh, I reached out to his management. And then like the, the night before we had to get all the vocals in to get edited, like that night he texted me, he's like, oh hey, this is Maddie. Uh, you still need like a spot on your album? I was like, yes! And so we like literally recorded something that next day and then it was mixed in that night. I just got really, really lucky. Um, and there, there were a lot of people I befriended on the way that were gonna be in it, but just weren't able to for various reasons. Like Miss May I was almost on it. North Lane was almost on it. We also have uh, Mike Semeski who used to be in Intervals, which um, uh, Andrew Reynolds, Drusif Stalin is his YouTuber name. He produced a lot of the uh, progressive metal deathcore stuff. And he's friends with him, so when he was mixing, he was just like, hey, I'll call up Mike, see if he wants me in. And then he recorded it like that night, so. And then there's also Dave Days, who's another YouTuber, which he actually reached out to me and he was really cool about it. And uh, Johnny Frank um, produced the whole album, so he just went ahead and did a guest vocal part while we were recording, so. Is it almost weird to have this mesh of not only the warp Tour scene, but also YouTubers, like you're saying, Dave Days and whatnot. It's like kind of these two different worlds, like people even like, uh, you know, like Johnny and, and Brian and like Damon, they're associated with two different yeah. worlds and they somehow collide. Do you think it's kind of weird because you're like, oh, I wasn't necessarily, you know, wanting to be a YouTuber is what you're saying. And I don't think anyone really like necessarily goes for that. Yeah but it ends up happening, like how is that for you? I feel like I'm more in the music scene than the YouTube scene because I, I don't really know any of the other YouTubers. Like I met Brian once and I don't, I don't know any of the other YouTubers on the tour, I haven't met them yet. So I mean, I guess I'm like a YouTuber because my videos are on YouTube, but uh, I've made much more videos with just people in bands. But um, I mean, it is pretty cool how they mesh together like that. And uh, I guess, uh, I, Brian has like the number one interview channel on YouTube, so... Thanks for bringing that up, dude. Yeah. Well, he was more like music scene too, and then I think over the next, the recent few years, kind of transitioned over. Um, and I guess, uh, I guess Kevin Lyman is someone to thank for that, because he's the one that brought YouTubers out. I don't know if it was his idea or not, but he was obviously for it. If you were to kind of describe the process of the album making from like start to finish what were like the crucial parts uh, that you kind of almost didn't know if they were gonna like get pushed through or if uh, you didn't know if they were gonna all pan out the way you wanted like what are some defining moments of the album process it's weird cuz you spend so much time on it and you put so much attention into it and so much work into it but the most important things are like the things that are spur of the moment um, like in a song, when you're in the midst of like writing and recording, uh, someone just gets kind of like, like Johnny will come up like, what if we did this? And then I'll work off him and then just right then it's in the song and that turns out to be like the funniest stuff. Which I, I think pretty much all of the really memorable parts in the album are things we just like, if someone was like recording vocals, they like messed up or like did something else and we're like, let's work off that. Uh, so. 
So those are like the important things. I gave myself a lot of time with it, so we were never really too rough on like deadlines or anything. And uh, it was kind of, it was a weird project because I'm not a band. And, and Johnny has never done anything like this either, so we just kind of melded it together. It had a really slow start. But uh, once we got into it, we're like, okay, we, we know what we want to do now. So next time we do it, which we will, we'll probably do an EP or something at the end of the summer. Um, we know what to do now, so it won't take five months to do. Lastly, if you could just tell fans uh, where they can find your stuff and um, maybe like a certain video that they should check out that kind of exemplifies your channel. My uh, YouTube channel, um, that's the main place you should go. Sub subscribing really helps my numbers, I guess. Um, I have some merch, I have that album which is on like Spotify, iTunes. What I do is ever changing, so if you just kind of follow me on social media and stay updated then you'll uh, I guess get all the new stuff, but uh, yeah. So internet's a good place. I'm on Warp Tour, if you can find me then you can say hi. Um, I think I may start doing some signings with Fearless or something, but I don't know yet, so we'll see. We're still working that out. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the interview. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And uh, this is Kime Interviews. Take it easy, guys. Peace out.